Today's message is a very special, different message. It was given to me by the Holy Spirit directly. Today's message is for the future, about the future, about you. Listen very carefully, and you will walk in a blessing from God that you never dreamed possible. So thank you for staying with us, and welcome again. Steve Muncy's father was a man of God from his head to his toes. He, he started several churches and he was relentless in his efforts to win souls. He won thousands of people one-on-one -on -one to Jesus. And he was in his 90s now dying slipping in and out of consciousness and took a few days before he left his body. And during that time, the family came from all over the United States to be at his bedside. And they all stayed there listening because as this dear old saint was passing over into eternity, he began to describe what he was seeing in heaven. He would look into heaven and tell them what he was seeing. And then he would slip into unconsciousness. And then a few hours later he would come back to himself and he would describe more of heaven and slip into unconsciousness. And then finally he said, I see the future. The future. I see the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of of Christ. Now let me stop there for a moment, push the pause button and explain what that means. There are two judgments ahead of us. The great white throne judgment of God takes place after the thousand years reign of Jesus on the earth which will begin very soon. At the great white throne judgment all people who do not know Christ will have to stand before God. Those in hell will come out of Hades and stand before God. Those alive on the earth will be raptured up to stand before God. Their sentence will be pronounced. They rejected Christ and they will be banished to Gehenna, the lake of fire, which will never be quenched. A lake of burning sulfur where Lucifer, Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet will all have their eternity as well. But very soon, any day now, any day now, Jesus will come, stop in the clouds like a thief in the night. We'll be raptured. Our bodies will change. We'll put up, well, our body will turn into a body like Jesus has right now, that he got after his resurrection. A body that has flesh and bone with no blood in it. His blood's on the mercy seat in the right hand, or in the throne room, rather. In heaven, as the eternal witness of our covenant. And... We'll receive a body just like Jesus. We can eat and drink and travel at the speed of thought. And all those that are in heaven now, believers in Christ, will come with Jesus. They'll come to the earth while he waits in the clouds. And their bodies will come out the grave. And their bodies are changed to become like Jesus' body, they'll enter their new bodies and they'll rise with their bodies along with us together to meet the Lord in the air. The first thing that happens is we go to heaven 
and we stand before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is the place where we will receive our rewards for our labor on the earth. Whatever we do for Jesus, we're rewarded, we're rewarded for it. Whatever we do for each other, we're rewarded as if we did to Jesus. Whatever we do to one soul, we'll be rewarded for it because we did it for Jesus. That's the time we're rewarded. Not only will we be rewarded, we'll also be given places of authority to rule and reign throughout eternity. Those that have served the Master well will be rulers of cities and governors. This is in the Bible, by the way. And those that have done very little, maybe nothing, will be servants in heaven. And it's got nothing to do with how successful we are on the earth. It doesn't matter if you're a multi-billionaire now. It doesn't matter if you're a famous singer, rock star, movie star. It doesn't matter if you're the best athlete in the world. That's not what qualifies you to get these rewards in heaven. It's got nothing to do with it. What qualifies us to get these rewards in heaven is what we do for Jesus here. If we don't hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord, then we have not been successful. It doesn't matter if you're a billionaire. If you don't hear that, you're not successful. You're in trouble, actually, if you don't hear it. So, getting back to my story, the judgment seat of Christ. After that, once you've been rewarded and God sets up his order, his structure in heaven of ruling and reigning with him throughout eternity, where he sets up his kingdom at that judgment seat of Christ, which will remain in force for eternity, different ranks and authorities and positions of leadership, He's going to set all that up at the judgment seat of Christ. And once that's done, then we will enjoy the marriage feast of the Lamb. Where the bride of Christ enters into that eternal, never parting fellowship with the groom, the Lord Jesus. Now, Steve Muncy's father was watching and seeing the future, seeing the judgment seat of Christ. He saw multitudes. He tells the people around him, his eyes are closed. He says, I see heaven open. I see Christ in his majesty and glory. I see billions of people standing before the throne with white robes before the Lord and their king. And he says, they are weeping. They are crying out aloud in sorrow. They are crying out aloud in sorrow as if their only child has just died. And he says, they are not crying because of the sins they committed while they were on the earth. Because our sins have been washed away and forgiven. No. He says they are crying because they feel the love of their king for them. They can sense how much he loves them. And they are so sorry they did not do more for Jesus when they were on the earth, and now the opportunity is gone forever. They can do no more for Jesus than what they did when they were here. The night is coming when no one can work. Child of God, this is your moment. This is your window of opportunity, and it's closing fast. Jesus is coming soon. Hear me. Hear me now. The return of the Lord is at hand. The return of the Lord is at hand. I know it. I know it. I know it. We must be ready. The five wise virgins are going. 
And the foolish will knock and say, Lord, rapture me too. He'll say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Are we fellowshipping with him? Are we communicating with him? Are we in fellowship? Do we know him? Are we talking to him, praying? Are we working with him? Is he working through us? Is he working to bring in the last? Is he working to establish the church? Come on, family of God. This is our moment. We are working for our eternal king. This is not all there is to life. This is just simply a job interview. These 60, 70, 80, 90 years is just simply a job interview. God is watching you now so he can give you your position of authority and influence in his kingdom. This is your job interview. 60, 70, 80, 90 years down here, that's all it is. And in the big scheme of things, in eternity, the life of man is like a vapor. Here today, and gone tomorrow. Like a vapor coming from a kettle. It's gone. Now's our time. Seize the moment. Become active for God. Let's not live selfish lives anymore. Let's not have any foolish virgins among us who live selfishly. Matthew 24, 11. The Lord Jesus said, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Because of this lawlessness trying to creep in the church, some will backslide, but not in this church. Amen. He who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. When everybody's had a chance to reject or accept, the rapture comes. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. For since we believe that Jesus died, was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living, when the Lord returns, will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will, shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we shall be with the Lord forever. So, encourage each other with these words. We can clearly see this acceleration of blessing and prosperity is coming upon all those who are laboring in the harvest fields. This blessing of God is coming upon all those who are working in his kingdom, establishing his church. It's coming upon us to prosper us, give us influence, to be more effective in building the temple of God. So how can I be sure that I am a laborer? How can I be sure that I'm actually working in his kingdom? The harvest Jesus died for must come in. Must come in. Do you believe that God is going to do his very best to reach the last harvest? How do you believe God is going to do his best to reach the last harvest? Or do you think the devil is just going to have his way and get them and put his mark on it? Do you think God's going to sit back and just watch them, the devil run the mark? No. Say so this, God must do everything he can and will do all he can to reach the lost souls that Jesus died for before the rapture. Is that true? All right, now say this. If Jesus must win the harvest, then he must work through us and equip us to get the job done. Is that true? Absolutely. Here is the test. Are you a laborer? Are you a laborer? You need to write this down. I'm going to give you six tests. Check yourself out now. See if you are a laborer. Number one, 
Are you praying for this church to grow, for new souls to come in and be added to this church? We are responsible for the growth of this church. Others are responsible for the growth of the church that they attend. But we are responsible for the growth of this church. Are you praying for this church to grow? If you're not, you better start. Pray for the church to grow. That's the least we can do, is pray for what God wants to come to pass. Instead of praying every day, give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy, I'll take what you give me. Let's start praying for God's plan to come to pass. Number two, test number two. Are you praying for lost souls that you know for them to get saved? Are you praying for lost souls that you know are going to hell? Are you praying for them to get saved? You know, I love to live in the world before I was saved. The only thing I didn't do was take drugs. I did everything else because I was too involved in sports. But my grandmother never gave up on me. I threw people who came to witness him. I had nightclubs. I threw them out of my nightclubs. They came with their Bibles and tracts. I said, you can't come in here. I had people throw them out. I had one young lady, when I was a young man of 17, she wanted me to go to church with her. And she, when I saw her coming, I crossed the street and looked the other way <laughs> and walked past her. But my grandmother never stopped praying for me. In 1971, I was 23 and a half years old. I totally submitted my life and heart to Jesus and gave everything to the Lord and got gloriously saved. Prayer for the lost does work. I'm an example. Well, when I got saved, I gave up my nightclubs and I took a job for Bear, Broth Bear Brothers working for one of their branches as a salesman called Zodiac Finishers on West Street back in those years, 1971, 72, 73. And the manager of that furniture store, a very modern store, was a man by Johnny Krobler. Johnny Krobler was a very smooth guy, very smooth. He was a ladies' man. Very, very nice man. You could not help liking Johnny, even though he's full on in the world and I was living for Jesus. In a nice way, I continued to sow seed, but every day, every day, every day, I'd pray for Johnny Krobler to get saved. And then one day we parted company, we went our different ways. We started the church in Johannesburg in an old building about 10 years had gone by. This is probably around about 1989, I guess, somewhere around there. So I hadn't seen him for about 15, 16 years, maybe even more, 20 years, I guess. Probably about 20 years. So I'm preaching along, and I, and I see this guy in the front row, and I think, we're sitting right near the front. Gee, I recognize that guy. Of course, he changed a little bit, so 20 years, you know. So have I. I mean, we all changed, right? So I recognize that guy. I'm preaching, thinking, where do I know that guy from? It can't be Johnny Krobler. He would never be in a church. It can't be him. So who's it? <laughs> so, uh, so I'm preaching, preaching. At the end of the service, I thought, I have to find that guy and talk to him. So I get off the platform, and he comes running to me, puts his hand out. He says, remember me? Of course, then I recognize him. I said, of course I do. He said, I just want you to know. I had to come tell you. I got gloriously saved. I'm living in Pretoria. I go to church there. And I knew the whole time that we worked together, I knew that you were praying for me every day. I knew that I knew that I knew. God was drawing me. God wouldn't give up on me relentlessly. God followed me and hounded me down. I couldn't shake it off. And I want you to know I yielded to it, gave a life to Jesus. I'm saved. I just had to let you know your prayers were not in vain. Your prayers were not in vain. Make a note 
of somebody's name that you know that's not going to heaven and start praying for them. Number three, are you available to be a witness to the lost? Jesus will bring people to you. Are you available to talk to them? Sometimes you'll sow seed. Sometimes you'll reap the harvest of seed others have sown. Sometimes you'll get them saved and sometimes you'll have to say a last word of encouragement and share what God's done for you, but you don't reap the harvest, but somebody else will. But are you willing to speak on behalf of Jesus? Write that down. Say, I'm willing to talk to souls that God brings my way. Number four, are you praying for those Christians who live in countries where they are being persecuted and even executed because of their faith in Jesus? We cannot watch on the news where Christians are being murdered because they believe in Christ and not pray. How can our heart of compassion not pray for the children of God? You know, if my child had a need and somebody came and helped them when I wasn't there, I would go to that person and say, I want to thank you for helping my child. I want to tell you how much I appreciate what you did for them. Now, how do you think God is going to feel when you pray for his children? who are being murdered because they believe in Jesus. He's going to bless you. He can't help himself. He's going to bless you, child of God. That's number four. Make sure that's on your list. Can you see the first four things revolve around prayer? Thank you for watching this program with us today. If you'd like to receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, then say this little prayer after me. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and save my life. I declare you are the Lord of my life. I will live for you with all of my heart. If you said that, Christ has received you as his own. And we'll see you in heaven. God bless you. Thank you for watching once again. You watch my guilt and shame away I'm on a cross for all of us All for love Coming up next time on Living Life at Christian Family Church Because you have set your love upon the Lord Therefore He will deliver you He will set you on high Because you have known His name you shall call upon him, and he will answer you. He will be with you in trouble. He will deliver you and honor you. With long life, he'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. Let's give the Lord a great big praise this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. To find out more about what God is doing in our church, visit our website at www.christianfamilychurchsa.com or visit us on Facebook and Twitter.
Now I choose to live a life that's different My course is set apart for you Take this light and shine it in the darkness Show the world a better way Can we sing it out? Thank you for your grace, Jesus.